Real quick, before we get started, 94% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel, so if you're watching this and you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Fallout 4, Starfield. One is typically labeled as a beloved series, while the other mostly leaves a sour taste in gamers' mouths. What was the difference in these two games? Well, to start off with, they certainly have a lot of similarities. Both were developed by Bethesda, with Todd Howard at the helm. Um, both were made in the Creation Engine, although Starfield does use the Creation Engine 2, which has enhanced lighting and some other features, but the point being uh, that they feel extremely similar and look extremely similar. The core gameplay loop is extremely similar. You start out as some seeming nobody and uh, become the chosen one who is destined to save the world or the galaxy or the commonwealth, whatever it might be. And in saving the world, you acquire weapons and uh, random gubbins in order to craft, create, and upgrade the gear you need in order to make you feel like you are the greatest adventurer to ever live. The characters are nothing to write home about, but they're all interesting enough. The quests are fairly similar for the most part, minus the extreme loading time between zones and Starfield, but we're not here to talk about that today. My goal in this video is to point to what I believe to be the critical failure of Starfield. That failure being that Bethesda forgot what they're good at. Bethesda is, or at least was, the absolute best at immersion. To reference other games that are made by Bethesda, when you're in the world of Skyrim, you feel like you are the Dragonborn. When you're in the world of Fallout, you feel like the Lone Wanderer on a mission to save his son. Bethesda does an incredible job of creating worlds where you delve inside in order to have adventures, the likes of which you could never have in reality. There's a reason that people would schedule a week off of work whenever a new Bethesda game was being released, because for the next week, you were going to be delving into that world and seeing all of the secrets, all of the interesting little bits and bobs, the different stories that you could uncover in these worlds. But that's just not the case with Starfield. You see, to me, the absolute biggest problem with Starfield is that there literally is no world to explore. Now, hear me out. I understand that there are planets to travel to, there are cities to visit, there are moons to explore, all that good stuff. But the crux of the problem that I personally had with Starfield is that it did not feel like I was a part of this world. I wasn't in Skyrim. I wasn't in the Commonwealth. I was playing a video game, which I understand is what we're talking about here, but I just didn't feel that same level of immersion. I was giving it my absolute best to find fun in Starfield, whereas I simply had fun while I was playing Fallout. The joy of a Bethesda game is that you get lost in these worlds. You become so immersed that you forget how long you've been playing, and suddenly you look at the clock and it's 2 a.m., and you have to be at work at 7 a.m. the next morning. Starfield just would not let me get lost in this world. Watch this footage with me. We'll speed through it, so hopefully I don't lose your attention. Alright, so, just to start out the footage, we are heading to this random point uh, to recover this flux capacitor, or uh, whatever it is, that uh, the quest that I've been given from the Brotherhood. So I'm leaving out from Sanctuary to start my day, and... Uh, just going on an adventure, going to see what's happening. I want to walk to this location because I know that I'm going to find interesting things on the way there, uh, like this random garden hose that I just happened to see, or this person who was presumably fishing when uh, the nukes went off, and the fact that I cannot jump to save my life. Um, so we keep exploring around, just looking at what the wonderful, lovely world has to offer, and whoa! Who is this person? What is she doing? Oh my gosh, she's trying to kill me. Okay. Alright, so we took her out. Of course, loot all the caps, bobby pins, uh, duct tape, because you can never have enough adhesive. 
And now I do the little game that she was doing because that looked kind of fun. Uh, so I, I shoot all the bottles down. And then I continue on my adventure, on my way to find this random MacGuffin. Uh, we'll just speed a little bit forward here because nothing very interesting happens in that area until we come upon this, this random structure with this random guy sitting on top of it using his binoculars to look out. What in the world is he doing? Uh, I have no idea. I don't think I've ever seen this character. I've played this game three times. What's up, dude? Oh my gosh, he wants to kill me too. Okay, all right. I can't hit a shot. Oh, I can't hit a shot in bats. And there we go. Got him. Level 17. Fantastic. Uh, probably will get age-gated because of the exploding head. Uh, but that's that's perfectly fine. I'll pick my talent. And away we go. Uh, continuing on our adventure. Oh my gosh, blood bugs. Kill the blood bugs. I actually managed to hit some, some pretty sick shots here. I'm, I'm kind of proud of these. Uh, and we continue on. Take the, the blood bugs bug per because it gives me acid and continue on and a new structure on the same path and there are tons of raiders here and a guy named boomer oh he's got a big thing on him okay we kill the first one and that's a fat man that's a nuke that just got launched at me i'm shocked that i didn't die just throw things at him kill it with fire before it kills me miss a shot in bats of course there we go he's down uh, can't recover that chassis, but, you know, oh well. And then we take out the, the rest of the base with very little ease. Boomer was, of course, kind of the boss of the base, right? Um, the the interesting part of the base. Pay no attention to what happens here. I'm not proud of what I accidentally... Yeah, yeah, that right there. Sorry, dog meat. I, I just I had my weapon out. That's my bad buddy. Uh, but offload some stuff on the dog meat. Go and find a comic book because those are in this game and they're cool and they give you bonuses uh, get this workshop so now I own this little outpost thing and then we continue on the journey and like I said this is a journey I feel like I'm going somewhere I, I have a point which I want to go to I'm getting random upgrades and things that will help me along further in my journey uh, but I've set this point and I'm not just fast traveling to a location, but I'm going on an adventure because I am an adventurer in an RPG where I'm playing the role of the Lone Wanderer. Um, then I find this random guy. Who is this guy? Oh, he doesn't like me. He's got dogs. He's got a turret inside of a, a shopping cart. Okay. Uh, well, took care of that. Took care of him. Took care of his dogs. One more turret. Got it. So the final point is that in the footage we just watched, I went on an adventure. I'm going to let it keep playing while I talk just so that you have something to watch. But my goal was to show you that there are always interesting things to find in the world of Fallout. The world itself is interesting. This is what Bethesda is good at. Great at, and maybe even the absolute best at when they put their mind to it is building a great world for you to explore. For some reason, they simply didn't do this in Starfield. They thought that the core gameplay loop that we've seen tons and tons of times at this point would still blow our minds, when in reality, it's just kind of boring when there's nothing interesting to actually explore. If Bethesda is going to get back to being Bethesda, to producing Game of the Year candidates, they're going to have to understand their strengths. Their strengths are not fantastic first-person shooter gameplay. Their strength is not mind-blowing writing and incredible plot twists or amazing character arcs. Bethesda's strength is building fantastic worlds where you get lost in your adventures. You become the main character of their stories. If any Bethesda game is going to succeed in the future, it will be because they built a world where we could get immersed. Where we could just start exploring and find things that make us laugh, things that break our hearts, things that simply grab our attention. Bethesda, in Elder Scrolls VI, in whatever game you're going to make in the future, please, on behalf of all gamers, do not forget what you're good at. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. 
If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button, leave a like, a comment, let me know your thoughts. Uh, it does help me, encourage me to keep uh, creating videos for you. Uh, maybe leave a comment if you disagreed with me. You, you think that I'm completely wrong and you love Starfield. Um, maybe you did agree, whatever it would be. Uh, leave a comment, let me know so we can talk about it. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Take care.